You want to be a Jehemidan. Or at least learn more about him. I think I can help you. Hello, my name is Max, and today I will be the Pale Bird. This is about Degenesis, a post-apocalyptic tabletop role-playing game. If you'd like to learn more about the world and the game itself, I would highly suggest you go on over to their website, because there's just so much more there that I myself will not be able to simplify. The world we know is gone. Humanity has survived dozens of grisly generations struggling for a better life amidst the end of Earth's civilizations. Various groups of people have carved themselves out a place and a purpose within this blasted heath. It's not going to get any easier. In the world of Degenesis Rebirth, there are organizations and societal structures that have found themselves in positions of power and influence across various regions. This video series will give a basic overview of the world through the eyes of the 13 cults, hopefully giving you a better idea and understanding of the cult and maybe even a few ideas for a character. Today, it's the Jehemidans. When I first started playing and GMing for Degenesis, I made the mistake of trying to explain Jehemidans as some Sufi Baha'i mysticism plus Old Testament, or Fremen from Arrakis but replaced Shai Hulud with sheep, or simplifying every Abrami to the character of Jethro from the Prince of Egypt. It's much more than that. Life is chaotic, and it's going to stay that way. Depending on where you may travel, you will encounter Jehemidans, in smaller groups to a host thousands at a time. Their camps are set up to roam from place to place, experiencing the seasons in different locations to ensure that the herds have plenty of fodder. Their morning prayers can be heard a couple of blocks away. The smell of grilled lamb is seductive and can turn the most rude bystander into a polite drilling customer. Their holy sons and daughters are beautiful, and their presence is accounted for by all those who surround them. They are not to be touched. For Jehemidan, there are three things to keep in mind that will be ever-present in their upbringing. One, the hierarchy is predominantly male. Those in power are often elders. There are a few exceptions, but the family man, the chosen son, and the blessed daughter, and the warrior, are who are in charge. It is then the wife, mother, the daughter, the younger brother who have their own duties and act in subservience. Each is important, and you're a fool if you don't recognize the importance of these gender rules and roles. Two. The faith that Jehemidans have is based on the words of their prophet and namesake, Jehamid, or Jehemid. Jehemidans are living the way that God is intending them to, so they will inherit man's domain. The tenets of this belief are vigilance, family, and divine providence. Sacrifices are given for good fortune. Iconides fast and meditate to unravel God's will and seek out pure truth from the physical world that surrounds them. Daily rituals and exercises are tied to piety. Oracles and iconides guide the souls of the host, interpreting and evoking the Lord through their preachings. If your righteousness and daily actions are one thing, any obstruction to your livelihood, family, or territory is blasphemous and may be treated as such. 3. The duty of the tribe is twofold, knowing your place and knowing what your future holds for you. Young Jehemidans and converts, male and female, are servants born to be warriors or wives. Those that last the longest may become progenitors of their own family, who might number dozens. Obeying your elders and abiding by the rules will drive you towards success. Depending on what's between your legs, punishment for not abiding by the taboos of the host will have differing consequences. In most cases, it's shunning, possibly forced marking so everyone can know what you've done. If one is not careful, there is an abyss of ignominy that waits for those who give in to temptations or speak too much out of turn. These rules are derived from the teachings, but they will change wherever they are. Strict scripture, but a group's surroundings will over time determine how distilled or how diluted the dogma is. Hebrespania, Borica, and Balkan are the homes of many Jehemdan camps and lands. These lands are separated by mountains, swamps, plains, and in a more poetic sense, oceans of impiety. A Balkanai host might have a more martial cast of women, either due to a loss of manpower or a winter when the men were away and didn't necessarily have the same protection. Borkan Jehemidans have made some concessions to Helvetics or Apocalyptics so that they could join their brothers across the Alps and the Adriatic to fight off the Anabaptists. While well, Vigilance has maintained the nomadic society, Compromises to strict scripture have been made to safeguard families, pastures, and faith. Territories are better held atop walls and from within towers. 
Zia's speeches will reach more ears if the preacher is on a pedestal year-round. Sons who are born to be sacrificed on the field of battle can instead live long years, interacting with various cults, clans, maybe even siring children. Heathens and infidels will have to be dealt with passively, or maybe even diplomatically. A Jehemedon may even engage in prolonged exposure to partially correct or profane faiths, dipping a toe into deviancy, maybe making a friend amongst the fishermen. No cult or religion has the same diplomatic weight, adherence to the old ways, organized, devout militancy that Jehemedans do. Pious, patient, and prudent, always in threes. Jehemedans are a cult that have held their own from before the Eshetan, and their numbers only ever increase. Whether you like it or not, their arrogance is backed up with intelligence and might. Not recognizing this is folly. It may be your duty to watch the herds endlessly, to commit yourself to your betrothed, to throw yourself into the fires of combat to protect your tribe. All these things may be very painful. It was said by a man many centuries ago that religion is the opiate of the masses. This is true. After all, a force of fearless, faithful, and painless men will encounter few obstacles that they cannot overcome. In contrast to the adrenaline of battle, a Jehemedon's existence is sometimes rather mundane. Watching over your flock, whether it be sheep or siblings, in faith, day-to-day -day rituals, bathing, exercise, prayer, tea, each of these may have no reason to be done other than tradition. But that doesn't make them worthless. Caffeine and theanine awaken the mind and still it. Bathing keeps the pores open and helps prevent disease. Morning exercises promote health and limber limbs. Where theology and secular practices become intertwined, everything can be sacred in some form or logical in others. Laziness, or sloth, is anathema. A smack to the back of the head of an adolescent Ishmaeli who forgets his sling. He will remember next time. A young Hagari will be told to stand out in the rain for a night because a toddler she was looking after got burnt while she herself was dozing off. She will be more awake next time. Nishmeli and now Delilah are banished from the camp for their sexual liaison, and the integrity of the families is put into question. Their negligence in raising children is obvious. Those children, while suffering their faulty choice, give an example to others for the importance of obeying their fathers. It is also an example to their fathers what poor leadership leads to. Establishing a discipline, both social and religious, will help keep the family and the herd moving. Punishments early on make sure that mistakes won't be made later. A warrior trains for the culminating moment. A life without routine can only be so constructive. To rest is to rust. Each Jehemedan man is a warrior, and each Jehemedan woman a shield bearer. A healthy home cannot be protected and provided for without the hearth guardian and the grand hunter. Each has their struggle, greater or lesser, the struggle and the overcoming of these obstacles is an endeavor that is in line with the Almighty. Only time will tell for the Jehenna. Divine providence is first shown through birth, and quality of birth, nature versus nurture, and then adding a large silver spoon in the mix. Each of these men and women will learn skills while they grow. Cooking, cleaning, combat, craftsmanship. To be a nomad, you must learn a wide variety of skills. It is the duty to be of service to the family, and if there's a section that you cannot be useful in, everyone will know. They will know. With the exception of the Aryanoi, a Jehemedon is expected to follow these rules, and there are serious repercussions if one doesn't. Even the Aryanoi have rules of their own, but they accept the outcasts of a more pious and strict community. This cult is preserved the way that most populations are, birds and bees. Family is integral. Sure, you may be the child of the newest wife, or in a complex set of circumstances, the Abrami you bow your head to is not your father, maybe an uncle, maybe a grandfather, but they are your family. A Jehemedon is not a static jihadist, or a pleasant, dutiful wife, or a zealot with an alpha complex. They're people, and they're human. When we look at the Jehemedon rank tree, it is useful to reiterate that these are not levels, or goals that every player or NPC will be striving to achieve. Think of them as a totem pole of power. It will differ between each cult, but for the Jehemedans, this tree is representative of the three main ways of being a Jehemedan. Those you have to answer to, what your responsibilities are, how true you are to Jehemed's teachings. This rank tree is highly gendered and dependent on fortune. We should keep in mind that this is not what every PC or your NPC will aspire to be. The vast majority of members of this cult will lay low and do exactly what is expected of them. Most Ishmaelis will at least become a sort of Jehemed, 
a Hagari very well may become a voice of Jahamid in their age. Those particularly exceptional in conformity, and also non-conformity, will rise in ranks. That does not necessarily mean success. Ranking up will put each Jahamidan into a position that requires righteous adherence to the faith and responsibility to the host one way or another, or particular taboos to be broken. The path of a lowborn has them as a foot soldier, and if they survive, a father and a leader in their own right. A lowborn lass could become an honored mother or a zealous repentant. Both are set in stone. The path of the highborn has so much more responsibility, and let's also say expectation, in their birth. Diplomacy, learning the ways of war, so close to the historical nobility of old, this ranked tree is terrifyingly weighty. An Asaki lives to die. Should he live, he'll become spiritual leader. A Sireli is a priestess that could be considered a blue-blooded broodmare, say that five times fast, but they also have so much reverence in their cult that they are untouchable. Strong, powerful men are beholden to them. Nobles, both of them, are so high that on the way down, it could easily result in broken pride, fractured legs, cracked skulls, and grave consequences. Then, there is the secret third option, the Arianoi. Regardless of gender or class, there is a plurality of Jehemidans of a differing flavor, many of whom are swords of Jehemid, Maculates, Hagaris, Ishmaelis, probably Sirelis, children and adults who prefer this more militant heresy. Iconites will not admit it. They've been reading the entrails and divining the ripples and grass, praying to a god that does not exist. The other one talks about God and the prophet and saying it is written, but he barely knows how to read. How can our belief blossom when it lies in isolated stagnation? They think of us as deviants and fools the Iconides, the Shepherds, the Prophets, Oracles, whatever. They preach to maintain their station. What is the difference between a subservient sheep and a fire-breathing black, golden-fleeced ram? Have you seen the Almighty smite our foes? No. Who avenges the trespasses? Who has massacred Anabaptists in the Adriatic? Who challenges the decadence of Osman? It is those who have seen miracles. Not told in allegory, but witnessing corporeal magic. We know the true rites, the true way, and the true word. We know the name of God. His name is Ares, and he was born in Crete. This cult in flavor is meant to be a self-sustaining military force. Fathers and mothers to bear sons who will fight and, in turn, bear sons and daughters of their own, continuing the cycle. This is what tradition is. Maybe a battle cannot be fought. The land is at peace. It would be foolish to try to start a conflict. Where will one then practice holy struggle? Maybe in craftsmanship, or in poetry, or asceticism. Dogma is there, but the human factor cannot be wholly divine. Even Jehemid's teachings will bend to the infinite multitudes of the universe or they'll have to. Becoming a shepherd or an oracle does not mean that you win. It is the peak of mixing authority and piety together, but that does not mean that you get to retire. Your job is now to lead to the best of your ability. They've been given destiny and will have to follow it unto death. Truly, I do not know what death looks like for a Jehemidan, but I know that we are destined for the stars, and we all walk up a different trail in the mountains. Regardless, the path must be traversed. The need to navigate chaos will follow you wherever you go. Alulam. He had been preparing for years, training, horsemanship, even matters of strategy, logistics, and tactics. Nothing could have prepared him for the real deal. Alongside Corradores, he faced down a pride of fierce African warriors. He flinched once the spear flew past him and into his lifelong teacher. He did not flinch again. He led from the front for a dozen successful ambushes, and a couple of open field battles too. It was not yet his time, and he will ride into glory. Fatima. This voice of Jehemed has been a mother to four of her own children, a foster mother to sixteen, and a happy grandmother to another eight. Her duties are taken in by younger women, and her Abrami husband has not been able to dissuade her powerful spirit. She would shame Abramis who beat their wives, educate Ishmaelis on religious matters, and also courtship. 
She even stared down the Iconite in his ruling on a matter of law. She was a mother and an auntie to so many in the camp that they would bow their heads in deference to her wisdom. Happy women make a happy village. Fatima is not happy. Kaplan was a great sword of Jahan. He led men into battle across the Adriatic. He remembers each defeat and victory over the fishermen there. He accepted the peace that was decided. Now he could return to Dalmatia to start a family and to sire as many children as he wanted with his lovely wife. He is an Abrami now. Judith. She was promised to an old, stupid Abrami, too busy with his other wives. You do not insult a Sereli. Judith devoted time to learning about the world and traveling through Osman. She found a delightful young rake who could not help but court her. Her bodyguards and handmaidens proved ineffective to quash the love between the two. Now, Judith carried the child of some no one, and everyone knew it. She bore a daughter and left her life behind. A circus of apocalyptics is a better place to raise a child than the tent of an impotent coward of a man. In Ishmaeli, Irad had failed too many times. The final straw was being caught laying with his lover, Daudi, the Asaki. They were both banished, their sins so grave. They survived the stones together, they survived the wilderness together, and they made their way to Crete. The Arianoi demanded a show of loyalty if they were to be accepted into this new tribe. To kill the lamb, unleash the ram, as it were. Dowdy thought that this price was too high and beckoned Irad to follow him so that they may leave. Irad ascended with the blood of his lover on his hands. Some people become Jehemidans because they are chosen to receive and follow Jehemid's teachings. Many are born into this role and simply fill out the shoes that they are given. While others are seduced by a young, well-groomed man or gorgeous woman clothed in nomadic gold and now being tethered to the cult, they are taught the teachings. Many others become Jehemidans because it is preferable to the separation of head from neck. Anabaptists will curse you. Judges and spittalians and the servants of Neolibians will try in vain to force their wisdomless laws upon you. Many will seek to corrupt your tribe. Money, false idols, and tempters will lead you astray. Stay vigilant, and remember, you are rams. After a long day of looking after the herd, tanning and curing leather, and reflecting upon the teachings, it would be rare for a Jehemedan to reject a cup of tea, enjoy a loving embrace, or maybe even some fisherman's intoxicant. So, sharpen your saber, trust your instincts, and know that whatever happens, it is written. Whether it is for your new campaign, a character, or even just a thought experiment, I hope I have helped set a frame of mind establishing and then destroying what it means to be a Jehemedan. I know this was a lot, so take your time, and if you want to, read directly from the source. I highly suggest it. Primal Punk and then Catharsis is the usual way to go. But for Jehemedan specifically, I would also suggest reading Jehemed's trilogy. Mostly in the first book, In Thy Blood, there's bits of... Uh, the Adriatic War shown through the eyes of Anabaptists. And then, in Black Atlantic, though I only recommend you read that if you want to get real spoilery, it's good for GMs, not necessarily for a player, it is filled with some good secrets. It's all free, go check it out. But if you want to focus on Jehemedans specifically right now, I have a couple suggestions down below. It can help you get in the mood, see what different examples of Jehemedans are. Uh, the few recommendations I have, specifically Sword of Jehemed and Jehemed's Quarter, with some extra, like, inter-cult diplomacy. Also, the audio file, Jehemed's Disc. I wouldn't recommend listening to the second and third one. They're completely unrelated to what I'm trying to present here. But the first one is good. They are the words of the prophet, and it will, you know, like, build you up to it. I don't know. So keep in mind, for Jehemedans, but in all things, this fight is not what you might think born of a light found right at the brink. It shines so bright, but I'm not gonna blink. It says, wage peace through the blood, through the mic, through the ink. Apnehi rathka mein viraj. I think that's how it goes. Anyway, this has been the Pale Bird. I hope you have yourselves an awesome frickin' radical day. See you later.
So you want to be an Arianoi. That's funny. Leave that at the end. 